Okay, it's Atlanta's number one hip-hop station, Hot 1079 and home for the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Of course, you know it's your fault, B, huh? Radio Shout In, stepping in the building. I can't even say I got an artist in this thing. I got an A-Town legend, an A-Town entertainer in the building. That boy, Fabo, what's oh! doing with it, my dog? Oh! Oh! Come on with it. <laughs> man, you already know, man. Just happy to be here, man. I can't complain. Hey, man, Fabo, let's just get straight to it, man, because it seems like every time I scroll up and down Instagram, <laughs> you on the stage somewhere turning all the way up with it, man. I mean, break it down to me being able to stay so relevant this deep in the game. Man, I just look at myself as the greatest entertainer out of Atlanta, and I try to stick with it, man. You know, it's just it's a lot of hard work, practice. You know, I've been on mountains in Japan meditating and doing these moves, man. They Come ain't regular. Now. <laughs> they ain't regular, man. You know, I had a lot of time to practice. But, yeah, man, just you got to strive to be the best all the time. Exactly. How do you feel, though, when you look up and every generation pays homage to you, man, and respects what you brought to the game to the point to where every time I cut on the radio, I'm hearing somebody mentioning Fabo name? <laughs> it's crazy, man, because when I first, when I was doing it, I just, you know, I was just being myself, so... I just figured, you know, these cats can relate. You know exactly. what I mean? You can always go to my music and draw from it. You feel what I'm saying? What you need. Exactly. And uh, I figure that's what they do. You know, some of them, you know, they go back. Some of them just remember. So, you know, I stay on their mind. Exactly. Now, from what I understand, you got a solo project on the way, man. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. A new project called The Jedi Returns. I already got a single up, Star Wars, up there Ooh. right now. So, you know what I mean? And uh, we got a new single with Nick Fury yeah. called Hit. And uh, we're doing a reality show on it right now. So, yeah. That's it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. That's crazy right there. Yeah. Talk to me about that creative process, putting this solo project together, though, man. Man, uh, you know, it take a while to, you know, zone out. I'm always doing music all the time. You know, every morning I get up, I'm, you know, I'm writing poems, haikus, yeah. you know, short stories. I do all that. So, you know, just trying to get in the frame of mind the way you want to do music again to the point where, hey, I think I got a, I got a message to give y'all. But I just, you know, I buckle down and say, you know, anything that I do, I feel like it's original. Exactly. So, you know, I'm just giving you the rest of it. So... Basically, every time I go in there, it's going to be something new. But when you get on that stage, though, Fabo, <laughs> and you see them folks going crazy, that don't inspire you to say, man, let me get in this studio and get these folks something new. Oh, yeah, man. You know, I always wanted to get in there and, and give them a whole project, yeah. but you know the powers that be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, nah, man, you know, once you wrestle that, wrestle, that, wrestle, wrestle that boogie, man, you know, and come out of it and say, hey, I'm going to lock down, it's always there. Exactly. I mean, talk about D4L, man. Oh, I mean, man. do we got any more music yeah, coming? Man, What's wait, happening? Man, the D4L project is coming, man. You know, we made the announcement at Freaknet. Ooh. You know, we did Freaknet together, which was crazy, talk man. Talk to me about Freaknet. Freak what was that, that like, was though, crazy. man? Because I saw the movies on this. Beside Luke breaking the, the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> that boy Luke, Uncle Luke, a fool. But Luke went here in it, boy. Y'all yeah. better do Luke right around Come on here. now. Nah, man, I thought, I thought it was crazy, man. It wasn't as live as I wanted it to be. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking I'm walking down the street and somebody mama out there yeah. still trying to do <laughs> their thing. You know, but, but yeah, I think it was, you know, on that tip, I thought it was a little light. You know yeah. what I mean? But, uh, you know, I seen somebody get stuck at the gas station. I was laughing, boy. They pulled in the back. How you gonna park at the back spot? <laughs> In the gas station <laughs> at the freak net. Like, come on, bro. It was sick cars in front of him. He out there screaming, like, eh, that was about the funny part of the night, though. Nah. You know? <laughs> speaking of freak Nick, though, Fabo, take me back to your younger days when you was out there turning oh. up in the original freak Nick. What was that experience like for you back Yo, then? When the original freak Nick hit, I was going to Greater High School, right? Ooh. I used to get the bus from Pear Home every day. You know, Pear Home, large project. Yeah. You know and so, you know, I get on the bus, boom. I don't even know the freak nigga going on. Like, you know what I mean? I get on the bus. I'm just a normal day. Yeah. I think it was Friday. It was that Friday. And uh, I come from North Avenue like I always do yeah. or whatever. And the street just packed everybody. And I see somebody behind the tree to my, hold up, my friend coming. You need yeah. to hurry up. I was like, wait a minute. It getting too serious around here. Yeah. So that's type of stuff that was going on. <laughs> my God. My God. Now, <laughs> going to this new project. <laughs> What is it that got you in that Jedi mind frame, though, Fabo? I'm the last Jedi, you Ooh. know. Last of the great ones. Break one, it down, one, man. One Michael Jackson, one Jane Brown, one Elvis Presley, one Fabo. Bottom line. Talk to me about being an original character and entertainer yourself and being able to make your claim in this city where so much talent has been bred up out of it, but ain't no Fabo clone out here. Nah, I mean, you know, when you out there and you're trying to eat or whatever, you're always trying to do something, you know, that ain't nobody else doing. That's what you're going to make the most money off of or whatever. So, you know, I always just try to be myself. 
I drew from Kilo. Yeah. You know, I grew up on the Kilo, man. I grew up on the Goody Mob, the Outcast. Exactly. So, you know, I had my blueprint, exactly. you feel me, for what I needed to do. And, uh, you know, when Andre got up there and said, the South, South got something to say, you know, I I felt like I had a, a torch to, to carry, you feel me? What went through your mind when D4L blew up and it was your time to say something? Ooh, I was in jail. Oh! <laughs> Talk to me, Fabo. I was in jail. I was in jail when we was blowing up. You yeah. know, and uh yeah, it was crazy. Guards coming in or whatever. We did John Bird South Day. Yeah. And uh I had one performance and it was running on the SS channel. I don't know if y'all remember when the SS yeah. channel used to be yeah. running all there. We keep running Moot B show playing. <laughs> you know, and uh yeah, man, and uh I, I was seeing it. And so, you know, I I did that little time and I got out and it was like, wow. And Pooh Pad was the first place I went. And just to see Bet You Can't Do It Like Me come on and everybody bust into the damn man, you know, they almost got a tip. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> what was going through your mind at that time when you touched back down in the city and you realized that it was yours? Man, shit. I don't know if it was never ever mine uh-huh. or whatever. <laughs> or whatever. I, I ain't never look at it like that or whatever, you know. I just felt like it was a wave going on. Yeah. It was it was different. Well, break down that wave then. It was because crazy. See, my whole thing is in Atlanta, you have different waves that yeah. change the trajectory man, of the city and I'm, what's happening in the city. Man, I, I tell people, man, it was like it was like watching one of them Cadillac Records movies or something like Temptations or something. You know, <laughs> being at the pool palace when you think back at it, yeah, it was like you had your K Rabs, you had your your Baker Road click, you had yeah. the Highway Boys. You know, people you wouldn't think about. I knew them all. Like you had the Young Money Click, which is FMG yeah. right now. And uh, you had K Rap, you know, and all of that. I, I never seen Lil Jon, but Snappy Fingers was one of the biggest songs. I don't think, you know, we ain't even call it Snap, so exactly. we call it Geek Music. But I, I felt like if you you had to be there, yeah, to see it. So when Franchise jumped off, it was like, there it go, you know oh, what I mean? Now. And uh, you know, Sierra kind of was around too, so yeah. she jumped off with the two step and all of that too. So you you kind of watching that wave happen exactly. or whatever. And when D4L dropped that Laffy Taffy. I remember being at 112, we performed Bitch You Can't Do It Like Me, and then we performed Laffy Taffy. Uh-huh. And the owner was like, yo, these girls want y'all to do that song again or whatever, you know, and I think that was the first time we kind of realized it's, it's, it's different. Exactly. For those that don't know that Atlanta history, man, can you break down how D4L came together and what it oh, yeah. stands for? Oh, yeah. D4L stands for Down for Life or whatever, you feel what I'm That's saying? That's right. I was a draft pick. Yeah. Uh, I, like I said, the pool palace. I'm going to the pool palace trying to beat these dudes. It's like yeah. 30 of them. <laughs> I mean, low walk in the club with 30 people they all got on black you know they gonna beat you up you yeah. lose they lose you gotta you know but I, I mean man you know you, I'm up there every night you know on Wednesdays or whatever move be doing the west side Wednesdays and all of that or whatever and uh, you just watching that movement happen I started hanging in barn home or whatever low let me stay at the uh, car wash with Moot B yeah. Moot B had the uh had the whole studio in the car wash. You watch the cars in the daytime, you know, going in the studio working. That's dope. And then Lowe built the studio. Yeah. Uh, right across the street from the pick and pay. And from that, everything just started taking off because, you know, franchise jumped off a little, little bit after that or whatever. Yeah. You know, Jeezy let us get in the video. Yeah. Then we dropped the bitch, can't do it like me. It was kind of it was kind of happening. Yin Yang Twins did the uh, Whisper and all of that. And I just think, you know, people knew us because mm-hmm. Bitch Can't Do It Like Me was out for maybe a whole year. So people knew us. Yeah. So, you know, it was it was crazy. I, that's that's kind of how it just happened. Moot B was from, you know, Harris Home, Born Home, Stuntman yeah. was from Hollywood Coat. We was all from different places. So it was crazy that it happened. Talk to me about y'all chemistry, though, man. And what was it like when y'all would get into the studio and start vibing? <laughs> Break that down. What you mean after the fight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after they've been knucking all that. That normally I start, you yeah. know what I mean? Because everybody, you know, got strong personalities or whatever. Yeah. So everybody want to do this type of song or that type of song. Everybody had a direction that they felt like we should have been going at the time, you know. We had the Front Street Wall yeah. or whatever. That was Bunky yeah. Moody and uh, uh, Front Street had their thing or whatever, you know. Yeah. And Low Me and Low was just in the streets, like, you know. And it just kind of came, came together, you know. We always in the studio recording. And uh, stunt man, you were the poor stunt man in the studio yeah. at times. But you know, you, when you come up there in the morning time, and stunt man, the first person in the studio, you know, and it's happening now. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? So that was that was how the chemistry happened, man. We just start hanging out together in the studio. You leave the pool palace, we hit the studio. You know, low come from the hood, he come up to the studio, call everybody in, he buying food and stuff, and it just because the studio was new. Exactly. Yeah, and that's just kind of how it happened. Bays was popping. So late nights at the babe, that's kind of where everybody went yeah. to. That's how Laffy Taffy happened. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Talk about that transitional Fabo, mm-hmm. with all of y'all being some street legends at the time. What was it like coming from the streets and then going into this music <laughs> industry and y'all being hot as fire? Wow, hard. Right. <laughs> Come on, man. One word, hard, hard. You know, I mean, you had to uh, just basically learn how to deal with different type of characters. When yeah. you're from that spot, spot like like that, you got to learn how to smile when you don't want to smile. And uh, <laughs> and it was, it was it was hard in the beginning or whatever, but we kind of adapted. Uh, Laughing Type jumped off so quick, we was basically at stations where we wouldn't normally be. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I mean, literally, you go in place and everybody like you number one. And we, we literally think of these people playing with us, like start getting angry, like, I don't, you know, y'all setting this up before we get here. <laughs> and then we hit number one on the billboard. So, you know, we, we knew it was serious then. What was going through y'all mind when y'all from the west side of y'all that hit number one on the billboard? Because, see, that's not a feat that everybody gets a chance to achieve oh! when they get into the music oh! industry, man. Come on now. I don't think we knew at the time, man. We was just. It was shot out, bro. Like, you got to think, bro. Like, how do you think we could barely walk half of the time? <laughs> I mean, because the shows was like five shows a week. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you know we had the money. We taking all five shows, you exactly. know. Exactly. And uh, I just think it was happening so fast or whatever, man. We kind of show hotel flight, show hotel flight. You kind of didn't see it until yeah. you, it really popped off or whatever. And yeah. until then, we were just grinding. When that geeked up hit though, Fabo, and it became an Atlanta classic, man. <laughs> when you in that studio recording that joint, did you feel like you was laying down something that was gonna get played forever? Man, I was just mad. <laughs> get out of here, man. <laughs> I was mad, bro. Like I was mad that morning and uh I went in there and wrote that song or whatever. It was kind of just straight freestyle. I think I just wrote the hook. And the hook was just going on and on at first. Just I gotta see my doctor Scott. It didn't have a geeked up in it. And uh, I went back in with Barry yeah. that uh, did the whole Diablos uh, project. Shout out to the Diablos. Yeah. You know, and uh, I uh, went over there with Barry, and Barry put the dun 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 boom, boom, and dropped the bass in there a little bit deeper, and it came my key, the key, you know, they just came out. What goes through your mind, though? Did you expect to be able to perform that song for life? Man, I, I was just giving one of my experiences. That's it. That's all I was thinking about when I was doing the song. I, I wanted to be real. You yeah. know what I'm keep up. I can't see all the walls keep looking at me. You know, oh. just, just it is, it was what it was at the time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nah, but I mean, you know, I, uh, I, I my homeboy club, bro, yeah, who I, one of my partners right now, best friend, and uh, I mean, I met him just like that. I'm on the road with D4L, and he's like, yo, you got this song called, you know, Geeked Up. We had, the album went out, yeah, he yeah. just heard me, heard a security guard playing it, and he's like, yo, can I book you for a show? And I was like, for Geeked Up, you know. And uh, when I went to Club Chocolate, I think it was Club Chocolate. The club was lit. It was crazy, and that's how I knew it was. It was one of them songs. But we was already jamming to it though. We in the we in the spot late at night. This this on repeat. Ooh. I had a slow version and a fast version. See there, see there. Now <laughs> when you had to haul off and remix that thing yeah, though, man, yeah, you yeah. dropped Jesus on it. Yeah. What was that like? I was in jail again. Oh come on now, Fabo. I was in jail again. But, you know, when I heard the remix, you know, when I first got out or whatever, you know, they folk, his folk reached out to me or whatever. We got the, uh, we got it hooked up and uh, went down to Patchwork and put it together. It was straight. I exactly. mean, you know, that was dope. Fable, I got you. You know, that let, that let me know I was all right right there because I couldn't pay him. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I feel you that. don't know if they gonna release it now. Nah. Come on. But uh, he was good people, man. Real good people, man. And the singer, the singer did wonders. Whew. Wonders. Now, when you look at what y'all brought to the game and to this Atlanta, you know, scene, what do you feel like it was that D4L dropped in this thing, man? I mean, just basically the money era. Yeah. You know, the people was worried about making a whole project, trying to get a whole deal from a label and all of that. We walked up and got publishing deals, you know what I mean? Big publishing deals off the rip, you know, that was something new. You know, I, I know people was probably getting them or whatever, but not like we was getting them at the time. Uh-huh. The ringtone thing just basically changed the game to the point where you you, you, you only needed a single to jump off. You ain't got to go in here and work on the whole project. And I think that was basically the main contribution that D4L and other artists at that time, you know, contributed to the situation. Yes, sir. You know, we made it where you ain't had to go work for a whole year and then you're your album might not be what they want it to be. And, yeah. You know what I mean? And then you get put on the shelf. You had some people that just sat on the shelf at that time. You know, you'd be like, yo, 
Why they ain't put your album out yet or whatever? You knew some of these cats. So they was had their little money or whatever, and then it ran out. Yeah. So, you know, I think that was the single aspect, waking up every day seeing that. Get your jams to ringtone. Boom, boom, boom. Everybody trying to get them on their phone. So, yeah. yeah. So, single-handedly, I think, you know, our era changed the way you looked at music. Now you just make a single. Come on now. Which I think ushered in the streaming, you know. Exactly. Era. How do you feel about the way that the game has changed now from them hard copies man, to the great, streams? Great, yeah. great, just great for the average average man, just yeah. the average person. Great. <laughs> you know, that's it. That's the only thing I can say because, you know, you could be sitting at home in your living room, you make a song right now, you uploaded, uh, what's that, Tune Chord Distro Kid yourself. You Money directly to you. you. You can't lose. You do the beat and the track. You ain't got to worry about nobody else. Big old facts. Now, out of all of the music that you recorded, what song is near and dear to Fabo's heart, man? <laughs> you probably don't even know it. <laughs> Talk to me. Uh, what's which song? I, w- I would say I was wrong. I don't know if you know it. Talk to me about that. <laughs> you ain't never heard that. I know that you're tired of the block and the and the gun play the money problems. Have my habits go away. I know you love me. You remember that? Yes, sir. Sometimes I know I'm wrong. I think I finally found my way, girl. Yeah, that had to be. What was it like going into that studio and pouring your heart out on that track, man? Times have definitely changed since you were singing songs like yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, man, I, I just grew up off the new additions and the Aaron Halls yeah. and the the groups that did the pow, pow, pow. So, you know, it was always in me. Exactly. You feel me? The H-Towns and the R. Kelly, early R. Kelly, the Hey Mr. DJs. I don't know who the hell this dude is, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, you know, I grew up in that era, man, so I just had it in me, you feel me? You always wanted to stand outside somebody's window and scream up there. Come on now. Yeah, but nowadays, it's just, you know, go to the club, stand in the parking lot by your car, and she coming out. <laughs> exactly. Now, a song that was near and dear to my heart that you got on and cut up on, was that tatted up, man? Oh. <laughs> tatted up. What was that like when you said, let me get on this song and cut a damn fool and bring it all the way home, Fabo? I was lit when I walked in the studio. Come on now. I was lit. You know, I just, I came in there on it. Like, yeah. I remember they had like the studio was downstairs or something. And I remember that I walked down these little steps and that, you know, I'm like tall. So I, yeah. I came down and I was like, everybody in there already, I could hear it playing or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, this is a song. Like, yeah, you know, I went in there in a couple of takes. I was screaming when I walked in the door. I did that in the beginning. My God. How do you react to the young folks, Fabo, when they come up to you, man, and they salute you as an OG and a legend, man? I mean, is that humbling for you, or how does that make you feel? I mean, when when you've been in the game as long as me, at this point in time, I'm basically, you know, trying to help somebody else. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's where I'm at. You know, you got to, on every championship team, you got to have that that superstar as a role player, too, at the same time, you know, understand the hero, so. You know, I'm out here, and when I see them or whatever, I just try to give them all the encouragement I can to grind it out. You know, and, uh, a lot of them walk up, man, you know, and they they want to thank you. I'll be like, for what? You know, I just did my part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, Fabo, what is it like when you get them calls, though, man, for those features and for folks to say, you know what, Fabo, we just need you to show up as a staple in the city. When you got to go to the Hawks game and yeah. be Fabo, when you got to show up the video shoots and be Fabo, when you got to come to the radio and be <laughs> Fabo, when you got to go to the hood and be Fabo, what is that like answering the call, man? Incredible. Talk I mean, to me. It's incredible, man. I mean, you know, just to be in that position or whatever where people would want you to do stuff like that or whatever, look at you as like some type of ambassador or something like that, you know, it's great. You know, I'm I'm very appreciative being a trendsetter or whatever. You know, I, I remember being at the uh, what was that, the Dirty Award? Yeah. And they shot me the uh, trendsetter of the year awards. You know, that was crazy at the Come time. I, I didn't even know what it meant. You know, you got these guys running around like, oh, you can't be like me. I don't want to be with you. You know, when you're unbelievable or whatever, it, it just take a lot to be you. They can be somewhat yeah. like you, but they can't never be you. So you know, being in that position where people want you. You know, to be some type of ambassador, they look at you for a certain purpose, uh, you know, that type of movement. That's that's great. What was it that was in you and what was it about you that made you different from everybody else, though, Fabo? I wanted to be different. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you know, okay. and everybody was black. I threw on a little red or green here. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? It's just just what the way I am, the socks, all of that. You know, it's just, just trying to be different, you know. And, uh, 
not wanting to be like nobody else. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? You know, it's just you be yourself. It's just always stuck with me. Exactly. And that's 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 basically it. I work hard at it. What was it like touring the world, though, man? Yeah. I mean, did you ever <laughs> think that it was going to be like that for you growing up in Perry Hall? <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, definitely not, man. Definitely not. I just think uh, every time I get off the plane somewhere, you know, I just look up and be like, man, thank God. Yeah. You know that I got another chance, you feel me? Because I was out there wilding, for real. Talk to me about being out there in them streets in the wilding, man. And what was your mindset at that time, man, when you just couldn't get right? Eat. <laughs> that's my mindset all the time man just eat you feel yeah. me i'll be seeing these cats you know they be on these dudes or whatever about the lyrics yeah about all of that stuff it's like you know when this dude sitting in the house eating ketchup sandwiches and he writing that rap he don't on. care about now one of you dudes or whatever he's just trying to eat exactly what is you talking about you know he don't know this song gonna blow up he's just trying to eat so when it blow up, he trying to get that that bag. You feel me? So yeah, I mean that's what was on my mind. Just trying to eat. Talk about coming from that struggle, though, man. What was it like for you, growing up in that struggle and having to overcome that, though, man? Man, my my story the same as everybody else. Yeah, you hear it all the time. You know, daddy gone, mama raised you. Yeah, five of us. Yeah, two bedroom. You know what I mean? Every check coming that can come yeah. still ain't enough. You know, <laughs> yeah. so it's just it. It's the same thing. Shot, stab, prison time, all the same stuff. Hands stuck to the table, all of that. You feel me? It's just, you know, you're trying to you get a second chance, boy. It's just like, boy, I can't go back. Come on now. Yeah. When you haul off and got shot, Fabo, what was going through your mind at that time? <laughs> boy, don't tell my mama. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell your mama. <laughs> what about staying alive in this thing? Sure, man, you know, I've, you don't be thinking about that. You be thinking about don't tell my mom. I was somewhere I ain't had no business. Yeah. So it was like don't tell my mom. Yeah. You know, at yeah. that time, that's what I was thinking or whatever. But, you know, I pulled through. Now, during that time with the snap music, y'all caught a lot of flack in the game. What was that like dealing with folks hating on y'all all the time too, man? Like I said, we were trying to eat. We ain't, yeah. You know, when you out there and you when you make these songs, you ain't thinking about what somebody going to say. We ain't never called a snap either, so we don't even know what that is. Yeah. We always called a geek music. Come on, We just now. didn't have a voice. You know, we don't write any magazine columns. We write no papers. Yeah. And nobody doing no <laughs> interviews with us, asking us at the time what it is. Yeah. So when we got everywhere, you know, when we went, where well, we went, every radio station, every that's, oh, what, you snap music. We looking at these people like they crazy. We don't even know what they talking about. You feel what I'm saying? We didn't even know what it was until we started sending the magazine, this snap music, this snap. We still don't call it that. Everybody around here, every rapper around here still saying geek. We yeah. You see, you hear anybody saying snap? Come on now. They went never done snap music. They made that shit up. Nah. Nah, I'm with you. So what was that like being in the industry at that time and having to maneuver and deal with folks on that BS, though, man? I'm, I mean, you know, being the street cat or whatever, you know, running the cars every day. I was selling Knicks at one point <laughs> in time, running the cars, so I yeah. know how to deal with people. Yeah. You know, every window you go to, you you know, it's a risk you got to yeah. take or whatever. So when you walk out the door or whatever, you always, you know, you're used to dealing with different type of characters. Yeah. And these dudes talking in magazines and on TV, we never really seen them. So when you run up on dudes, it'd be like, oh, man, you know, at first I ain't like the song or whatever, but then my wife kept playing it or whatever. That's who it was for in the first place. I really don't care about your opinion. Say, yeah. girl, shake your laughing taffy. So any dude, you know, was talking at the time, I don't know. You yeah. know, I gotta gotta wonder about him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh yeah, man, you know, we heard we heard the BS. And uh, I think that's probably why R.I.P. shot low, my dog wouldn't be nothing without him. Yeah. I think that's why Low was in that mentality when he went back out there that he wouldn't, you know, he wasn't gonna do nothing of the sort. You feel uh, what I'm saying? It was gonna yeah. be all born home, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Because we tried that industry, you know, tack the, the first time. Let's 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 do this this way. Let's see yeah. what they wanna do or Whatever, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, the the disrespect came from that, trying yeah. to do it the right way. I feel that. Speaking of Lowe, man, when Lowe passed, how did that impact you, man? Man, well, I feel like I lost an arm or a leg. My God. Yeah, man. You know, my dog, man. Yeah. You know, we, none of us wouldn't be anywhere without him. Just his, his, his drive, that effort he was putting into it, even from jail. Yeah. You know, so he was in jail when he got out of jail. So that's crazy, ain't it? That's crazy as hell. Lowe's in jail when he got out of there. For those that don't know Lowe, man, can you speak for him and speak to him about 
who Lowe was and what he meant to y'all as a homie, as a comrade in the game, and to the city. Man, I can't ever speak for him. Yeah. You know, but uh, I mean, just period, man. You know, he was just that dude, man. You know, I I, I was telling somebody the other day, he used to be in the band. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm up there, I was a drum major and stuff at home. When he pull up or whatever, you know what I mean? He pull up in the burnt urns, you know, Monte Carlo or something back then, Impala, whatever it was, yeah. way back then. Like, this this is when I was in high school. So, yeah. you know, people don't know how long Low been in our whole life. So, it's like he's been around. He's like that big brother, that uncle that you already know. So, when he started coming picking me up or whatever, that was the crazy part. Like, he pulling up in the Denali. He riding up in the neighborhood, snatching me up to play basketball because I was playing basketball. Yeah. And he'll snatch me up, like, let go. Like, hey, for real, you want to take me with you? Like, <laughs> you know how I get down on you? Like, yeah, yeah I ain't worried about all that. You know, come on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I thought that was big right there. So yeah. he already had me from that. And, uh, you know, that's how it happened. Because that's how he recruited me. I was yeah. already coming to the pool palace, winning the talent shows. And uh, when I went on the run, he he started coming up there where I was, snatching me up. Like, and, <laughs> you know, I think that, that blew my mind right there. Yeah. So from the beginning, I was locked. So, I mean, that's what he did, dude. Like, I mean, anybody he met, yeah, you feel me? It was just like you was drawn to him. It wasn't like he was trying to keep you around. It was just the, his atmosphere, the stuff he was doing. You just was captured by it or whatever. So, you know what I mean? Come on, dude. Look, first place I went with Low Central Station. Oh. He won't leave. <laughs> this man in there, money in his pocket sticking out like this. He's sitting on the pool table like he owned the place. Come on now. He just won't leave. I'm like, bro, everybody leave and let go. He's like, cut, cut, cut. We good. <laughs> this, you know, he, we walk out. Glad people going in the parking lot, get in the car and pull off. Like, you know, he just that dude. Exactly. Exactly. Lashley, Fabo. What do folks need to be expected from this new album? And is there oh. anything else you want to get off your chest, my dog? Yeah, I am incredible still. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Don't forget that, you know. And uh <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, man, uh Star Wars, man, you know what I mean? That's what it is, man. Yeah. You know, another planet, another world. We in spaceships every day riding by in warp speed, you know, going light years away and coming back. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, if you want to take that journey. You know, you're going to pick up this project. That's right. The new single uh, that I'm pushing right now is The Hit with Nick Fury, mm -hmm. uh, the one who did the game over for Flip and all of that. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh, we got the new uh, TV show, the reality show called DJs of Atlanta. Ooh. And uh, where well, we're going around to the different DJs yeah. in Atlanta, trying to give them their shine. Ooh. And, uh, you know, just trying to work it, man. You know, I'm out here. I ain't going nowhere. We got Carleon, KOJ, you feel what I'm What's saying? What's happening? Uh, KOJ, he ain't here, but, oh. you know, he, 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 he coming. Yeah. And I uh, got my brother, Nature. You know, and uh, yeah, man, we out here. We ain't playing. Fabo, my dog. Yeah. Appreciate you coming through this thing, boy. Wish you nothing but the best and much success. Beehive Radio Shout is. Ah! Let's go. Ah!